Welcome back Techno Wizards to part 2 of lesson 4 on investigation skills where we talk about the use of pneumatics and hydraulics to obtain a mechanical advantage. Have you ever used a bicycle to reinflate a flat tire? Have you ever wondered how the brakes on a taxi work? These systems use air or liquid such as oil to transmit force and make things move. Remember what happens when you blow up a balloon and then let it go. As the air inside the balloon rushes out, the balloon is propelled through the air and a similar principle is used in pneumatic and hydraulic systems. These systems are used in complex machines to help us perform tasks that we would otherwise not be able to. A pneumatic system uses the power of compressed air to make things move. The air is compressed or squeezed into a container by a pump or a compressor and when the compressed air is released it produces a force. This force can give a mechanical advantage if it makes a mechanism that it touches move. A bicycle pump or a dentist drill are everyday examples of pneumatic systems. Other examples are automatic, train or bus doors. A pneumatic system is an open system because the air is first let into the system. We can even hear the hissing sound that the air makes when it escapes the system. A hydraulic system works in a similar way to a pneumatic system, but instead of using compressed air, it uses liquid such as oil to make things move. Hydraulic systems use liquids in cylinders to change small forces into large forces to provide mechanical advantage. Some common examples of machines that use hydraulic systems include vehicle braking systems and industrial machines like hydraulic lifts and front end loaders. Hydraulic systems are closed systems because the liquid moves from one container called the reservoir to another container without letting any of the liquid out of the system. Unlike air, liquids cannot be compressed. So in a hydraulic system, an input force on the liquid in the reservoir gives an immediate response. Also, very little input force is needed to get a large mechanical advantage. So hydraulic systems are very powerful. Okay, now let's do an investigation on the force transfer between two unequal syringes filled with water in a hydraulic system. We start by making a hydraulic system. You will need three plastic syringes without needles, two of equal volume and one smaller one, a short length of plastic tubing which fits snugly over the ends of each syringe, a bowl of water, a matchbox filled with stones, a ruler and a large sheet of paper to make a measuring sheet. Connect the large and small syringes but fill them with water. Remember to do this under water so that there are no air bubbles in the system. Make sure that the plunger of the large syringe is completely compressed before you fill the system with water. Investigate. Dry the system off and repeat the steps below of the pneumatic system. Copy the table below and record your results in your workbook. Now let's move on to analyzing our data and drawing to conclusions. Look at the results you recovered for these tasks. You should have noticed that, number one, in the systems that used equal size syringes, when the system was filled with liquid, it moved the mesh box further than when it was filled with air. This is because air can be compressed and the action is delayed. So there is greater force transfer using hydraulic systems. Two, in the systems that used syringes of different sizes, although it was more difficult to push down on the large syringe, the distance the smaller syringe moved was greater. More force is needed to produce movement. The force transfer was greater when the large syringe was the input syringe and the small syringe was the output syringe. And finally, let's do an investigation on the force transfer between two unequal syringes filled with water. Let's make a pneumatic system first. We use two syringes of unequal size, one large and one small one. Push the plunger of the large syringe all the way in and pull the plunger of the small syringe out so that it's nearly at the top of the syringe chamber. Connect the two syringes with the plastic tubing. And now to investigating. Point one, push the plunger of the small syringe or the input force. Observe how far the plunger of the large syringe moves. This is the output force. Repeat this 
but using the large syringe as the input syringe. Which one needed more force? Point 2. Now place the mesh box on the measuring sheets to the right of the line. Place the plunger of the large syringe against the mesh box and use the small syringe as an input syringe. Again, when you push the plunger, the mesh box should move leftwards over the line. Observe how it feels. Measure the distance the mesh box has moved. And finally, point 3. Repeat step 2, but this time place the plunger of the small syringe against the mesh box and use the large syringe as the input syringe.